that is very high tension right now and kind of very palpable tension that if care is not taken, something will explode in Kano. And what is going on? It has nothing to do with politics or politicians or the scarcity of food. But somehow, politicians are involved. It is a struggle over the Kano Emirate stool. Very old and ancient institution, the Emir of Kano, right now, there are two emirs contesting, contending for this throne. How did it all happen? I will just plead with you one thing. Listen carefully because this story is very complicated so that you will unravel it step by step and you understand what is going on. You will also see a couple of videos to authenticate and help you make sense of all the mess in Kano. The summary of the whole thing is that Nigerian politicians, anything they touch becomes rotten. They have now corrupted the highly revered stool, the Emir of Kano. Now, let's get started. The governor of Kano State, Abba Kabi Yusuf of NNPP, took an unprecedented step yesterday, unannounced, unexpected, he removed the emir of Kano, the sitting emir, Ado Bayero, and instantly introduced a new emir, Sanusi Lamido, Sanusi. And he was the emir before Ado Bayero, and he was dethroned himself in 2020 by Governor Ganduje, who did something even more. He expelled him from Kano State, exiled him that he could not come to Kano again. And I couldn't understand how this is possible. How do you deny somebody coming to a city where he lives because he's no more the emir? He has his reasons. Anyways, and um, Sanusi left, been in, living in Lagos. People helped him, packed his things quickly, and he left. And now, this governor of Abba Yusuf suddenly recalled him and removed the current emir, Ado Bayero. And it was like a military coup of sorts because Ado Bayero happened to be outside of Kano. He traveled out and they did this replacement or dethroning at his back. And before you could say, what is going on here? They invited Sanusi to come to Kano to receive a certificate immediately. And then, because Ganduje created smaller emirates, I think about five of them, and one of the emirs in those emirates went to court immediately to stop anybody from installing Sanusi and to let the status quo to stand. And the high court in Kano gave him that permission, stopping them from installing Sanusi or giving him certificate. But you know Nigerian politicians, they don't listen to the courts, they don't obey court orders. What did the governor do? He said Sanusi should proceed immediately to Kano to receive a certificate despite the court order. And he came, he gave him the certificate and we later began to hear from him. He said the judge that gave this judgment is in the United States. The governor is saying this. So how can he be in the United States and give this uh, court order? I don't know the truth. Whether the man is in the U.S. or not, I don't know. So hurriedly, they gave Sanusi the certificate. And by 2 a.m. to this morning, the deputy governor drove with Sanusi to the Emir's palace. And whoever gets to that throne and the sitting on it is the Emir of Kano. So the deputy governor got there with him. He sat on that throne with numerous supporters and the security men of the deputy governor. But hey, Ado Bayero wasn't taking this. I don't know where he was, but suddenly he flew immediately and landed at the airport in Kano by 4 a.m. in the morning, two hours after Sanusi went into his palace. And the speculations now have it that it was the national security advisor who gave him the airplane to fly immediately to Kano. And who is that national security advisor? You know him, the former head of the EFCC, and his name is. So he came back 
by 4 a.m. A lot of people met him at the airport, and he headed straight again to the Emir's palace. But on getting there, he met stiff resistance from the Sanusi, who is now inside the palace, with the security men of the deputy governor. They refused him access. His supporters and his uh, Sanusi's supporters were at each other. They didn't clash, but you could see that nobody allows anybody to move. And what happened next? The governor now turned around and issued an order to arrest the deposed emir, Adobayero, saying that he has no right to come back to the palace. But hey, the Adobayero, nobody could arrest him because he came with a retinue of policemen, military men, quite a huge contingent. And you are now sending policemen and the military to still go and arrest the man who is also being protected by police and the military. It wasn't possible. And then the deputy governor's entourage also are stopping him from getting in. In fact, he has to make do and move to another palace they call Gidan Nasarawa. And that's where he went to stay. But staying there, he was staying as an emir also. So right now, Kano has got two emirs, one living inside the emir's palace and the other one at Gidan Nasrawa. So Kano is on the tip of an iceberg right now. Nobody knows what will happen next. Apart from showing you the videos of these arrivals and movements, I'm going to take you back in history because there was one governor of Kano State many years ago called Abubakar Rimi. He once explained what this emir of Kano tool means. I will let you also watch that video where he says that any emir is just a public servant. If he does something wrong, him as the governor can remove him and heaven will not fall. That Ada Bayaro as a den, the emir, is just like any other human being. So what is going on here? It is just that the politicians, it is like anything they touch, they will damage it, they will destroy it. Look at Emir of Kano, an institution that have lasted centuries with so much huge respect. They have now reduced it to, I mean, a joke. And I'm a bit puzzled that uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi could allow himself to be a participant in this kind of bizarre thing. I thought he is a gentleman at a certain level that he could say, listen, you politicians are not going to use me to play this game. No, but here he is participating in it, claiming to be the rightful mayor because he has been uh, restored to power and the other one is fighting. On the other hand also, when Sanusi was removed, he never fought. He just left quietly. In fact, he ran out of Kano with a chartered flight and all that to escape. But here is this one. Instead of staying wherever he is, he ran back to Kano to challenge Sanusi. Nigerian politicians are one of a kind. Anything they touch stinks. Now, I think you should begin to respect the Oba of Benin, that ancient kingdom. This kind of bizarre macabre dance can never happen in Benin. The throne is there for centuries and the succession is so, so engraved in their history and culture and so organized that you will never have any reason for fight, argument or whatever. That is an ancient kingdom. That is a culture that one should be proud to be part of and to boast of. There is a problem in Kano. What is happening now and what will happen next, nobody knows. We are just hoping that it doesn't develop into a street fight and the supporters of different factions, of different emirs, will begin to take it out in the street because Kano is very highly populated and any problem there really trying to no. make the area of Kano something which he is not. Not, yes. Let me tell you this, my friend. I will advise you to stop talking about this area of Kano. The way you press people 
And the way our political opponents want to regard the Emir, that is not the way we regard the Emir. As far as we are concerned, we the elected government of Kano State, as far as we are concerned, as far as I, the governor of Kano State, is concerned, the Emir of Kano is nothing, nothing, nothing but a public officer. I, I read in the paper that he, uh, somebody said, I said he's a civil servant. I never said so. I didn't say he's a civil servant. He's not a civil servant. He's a public officer who is to... holding a public office and who is being paid from public funds and whose appointment is at the pleasure of the governor of the state and who can be dismissed, removed, interdicted, suspended if he commits an offense. And there is nothing absolutely unique about Adobayo Emi of Kano. He is equal to any one of my eight emirs. And believe me, if he commits any offense which will make it necessary for us to remove him, we will remove him and we will sleep soundly.